Hey, okay, so let's uh, continue to prepare our application to use Azure. Uh, one problem that we've got here in our application, in our code, is you'll notice that we're using this connection string over and over again. Uh, so what happens if we wanted to change that configuration? We'd have to change it in all of this code. So that's a, that's a problem. And anytime you see code that's repeated like this over and over again, it's time to do something about it. In an ASP.NET application, we can store that configuration in the web config file. So we'll show you how to do that. We just simply open this web config up. There's a lot of different settings in here. We're not going to go into the details on, on all of these, but we're going to add a, a new section here called Connection Strings. Now if you don't know XML, it might be good to learn that. And then we'll add a connection string inside of that. And we'll say add name equals, and I'm going to call this local DB. So that's just a key that we're going to use. That's going to be the name that we refer to this in code. So add name. and the actual connection string. Actually, let's see this. We got this messed up a little bit, so we can do it like this. So we say add name equals, give it the name, and then we give the connection string equals, and then we give the actual connection string. So we've already got that defined over here in our persistence class. So if we grab all of that right there, that's our actual connection string that we're using. So we'll put that in right there. Okay, so now we have a in the configuration file this connection strings section, and we have added this local DB identifier that is associated with this connection string. So now in our code, we can change our code, and we can do this instead. So we can get rid of all of this, and we can say configuration manager, which is a class in .NET that allows us to access that configuration file and pull back the data that's stored there. So if I say dot connection strings, it knows of that section. That's a defined section, and uh, then we just give the key. Local DB was the name that we gave it. And say, give me that connection string. And that's all there is to it. Now you'll notice we have a red underline here. This is because we we're missing a using for that. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how you can resolve that. If you right click on this in Visual Studio and select Quick Actions and Refactorings, It'll bring up a list of possible places that it could fix that, and we want to use this top one using configuration. And so um, it'll get that okay. I did have a typo here. This needs to say connection strings. All right, and that's all there is to it. And so what I'm going to do is quickly grab this code and replace all of the places that I'm using a connection string with that same code so that it goes and reads it out of the config file. Now anytime that I want to make changes I make it in one place and I'm done. I don't have to worry about that. And as we move to Azure we're actually going to use the Azure, we're going to use a MySQL database in Azure and so we're going to want to be able to uh, have this all be configurable through config files. And so let's go ahead and do that on this one. And we'll do a quick check and make sure everything still works. And then we'll be ready to do one more thing to make this even more secure. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure that everything still works. We'll bring up DHC to test it. So it's launching right now. I've been doing some testing with an Azure version of this. You can see here um, that URL is not active yet, so we're going to replace it with yeah, 
this. I did notice a problem in Chrome, and I think we'll probably see it here. Chrome's got a, oops. Did not pick that up. Let's grab that. Let's do the get. We know that that record's in our database. And then let's do slash three. I was just going to mention that in Chrome, I got a uh, port security warning. So that's something new I hadn't seen before. But if that comes up again, I'll show you how to fix that. All right. So there we go. Everything seems to be working fine. I'm not going to go through and test everything else. Now, one more thing we need to do. So we are going to get to the point pretty quickly where we, we are going to want to put this all of this code up in a source controlled system. In fact, I'm going to provide the code for you to pull down and look at. But in order to do that, I'm going to use um, something called GitHub. I'm going to be using uh, Git, G-I-T, and GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B. And the reason for that is that's kind of a standard that's emerged for source control. However, one thing to be aware of with GitHub, if, uh, if you put code up there, it can be read by other people. It can't necessarily be changed by other people, but it can always be read. So right now, we are storing sensitive information in this config file. We have a user ID and a password. Now, that user ID and password is to a local database, so it's not really that big of a problem because someone would have to be able to tunnel into our machine in order to access this. Also, we're not actually storing any real data in here. So, um, but, but we, when we go to Azure, um, that connection information will be very sensitive. And so we, you never want to have checked into GitHub credentials. That's the bottom line here. So we need this web config to be put into GitHub. And I'll show you how to use GitHub in a subsequent video. But the problem that we've got is we've got to get this information out of here. We can't have it in, the, in this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in a separate file in our project, just this information, and then we're going to not ever check that into GitHub. So that file would never exist in GitHub, so people could never see it. So if you're doing anything with GitHub right now, if you're doing anything with Amazon Web Services or Azure or anything that has user ID and passwords or any kind of credentials, you want to go... Uh, get that out of there um, and not upload that into GitHub. People go out and just look for those um, user IDs and passwords so that they can grab free computing time on these cloud systems like Azure and Amazon Web Services. All right, so what we're going to do um, is we're going to create a new file. So here under our project root, we will do uh, add. And it's going to be an XML file. And the name of it is going to be dbconnections.config. Actually, I don't think that's going to do what I want. So we're going to do right click, add. Oh, I need to stop this from running. That's the problem. Okay, so right click add new item and it is going to be a text file uh, well actually an xml file so let's go find that actually it's going to be a config file is what we're looking for so let's go back down over here and find that So we want a web configuration file right here, and we're going to name this we are going to name this DB connections. Okay. So that's just going to show up here in our in our files. And inside of that, inside of DB connections, we are actually going to get rid of all of this. We're 
and opening up our web config, we are going to add all of this right here. So the connection string section that goes in here like that. Okay, now in our web config, we will replace all of this with the following. So we'll get that out of there. And we'll say config source equals and the name of our file that we stored that in. So this is kind of neat because you can break this big config file up into separate files and Sometimes you need to do it for security reasons like I'm doing here, demonstrating here, but not necessarily all the time, okay? So that's all there is to it. Now what happens when this config file is read, it will go and pull in that information from the local hard drive. So this is really easy when we, um, we don't, we can mark this file as never checking it into GitHub or any other version control system that might not be secure and that'll help preserve our, our database credentials. Uh, just a word about the web config, what happens when the web, uh, website or web server starts up uh, for this particular site or service, it reads that web config and uses the settings that are in here to configure the web server accordingly. Okay, and, and again, there's a lot of different things in here uh, that we won't go into for right now, but that's how we can handle making sure our connection strings are in a separate file and that we don't inadvertently open up access to a database or a service that we're using in GitHub. So let's go ahead and run this and test and then we'll be done for this video. Assuming everything works okay. So here we go. And we'll go back and do a get on everybody. That came back okay. And we'll go over uh, after four, ID four. That should bring back Sam Boyd. And it did. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful to you. Uh, we'll continue on with moving everything to Azure. We'll, we'll move the web service and we will move the database as well to Azure.